Hi everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome to another video. We've got quite a nice case here. Uh, what you're going to see in this video is a, a fairly narrow ear canal, um, fairly small ear canal with a very large chunk of wax actually stuck in there. And initially, of course, I go in with the suction, remove all the dead skin and everything that's in the way. And then I try to move this, this boulder, essentially. Um, but it's actually too large to actually get out of the ear canal. So the aperture of the ear canal, the entrance to the ear canal, is actually slightly smaller than this earwax boulder. Um, so we're going to have to employ a few techniques here. And I know that a lot of you have been uh, leaving questions and um, asking me in the comment section to showcase a few of the, the, the different tools that we have in the clinics, you know, perhaps the more obscure ones. And uh, this just happened to be a case where I uh, used a Formby scoop. So a Formby scoop is a metal instrument. Most of them are made of metal. In fact, I've never seen a plastic Formby scoop. But um, you have a loop on one end. So similar to a Jobson horn, but the loop is, is sort of more of an oval shape and fractionally larger. And then on the other side, you have just sort of a, a, a pick or a, a spike, essentially a blunt spike. Um, which I very rarely use because if I need that type of tool, then I'll, uh, I'll use a Rosen inserter. But you can see here, as I was moving it around, it's all moving in one big piece. So it's one huge chunk. Uh, so I'm going to use the scooped end of the Formby probe just to give me some position. So at this stage, I'm not looking to remove it. I'm really just looking to unstick it from the canal walls, maybe just loosen it up a little bit. So the, the amount of debris that I'm removing here with the scoop is fairly neglig negligible. But um, that wasn't the exercise here. I'm, I'm just at this stage, just kind of giving myself a bit of position. Um, so back in with the suction probe. Now I thought that I would be able to drag it out at this point. And I do make a lot of progress. So as you can see, I'm just sort of wiggling it around, trying to walk it out of the ear canal. It's been slightly oiled with olive oil, but not too much. Um, but when we actually get to the entrance, the whole thing just sort of chokes and uh, I can't get it out. So right around here, I can tear off just a little bit of skin, but it is well and truly rammed in there. So all we're going to do in this case is use the Formby scoop just to clear up essentially. And you may be wondering at this point, well, why bother using this, this metal tool? Why not just use a Jobson horn or a St. Bart's hook? Um, and if you're wondering what those tools are, I'll, I'll put some videos in the description box so you can see me using those tools so you know what they look like. Um, but uh, those tools are, are slightly smaller, as I mentioned. And the reason that I just felt the Formby scoop in this case was just a good idea is because it's quick. So because it's a, essentially a large loop, you can move a lot of debris very quickly. And, you know, I would never dream of, of inserting this, you know, right down in the ear canal. It's just too large. Um, but because it, everything's peripheral and, you know, at this point, you know, everything's made of cartilage, essentially. It's just soft cartilage subcutaneous fat. I don't mind kind of jostling around and putting a little bit of pressure there just to get the scooping action. So Formby scoops are very good if you want to essentially leverage out a lot of debris quickly rather than having to sort of faff around with the suction, taking little bits away, taking little bits away, um, or with a hook or, or with a Jobson horn. Um, a Jobson horn probably would have been okay, but again, I just wanted something large to, to get the job done. Um, so here we go, second scoop, an enormous amount of debris removed there very easily actually. Um, so that, that's really why the Formby scoop is good but not used that often because it's, it's really so large that you can only use it in, in these particular cases where you just need to grab stuff um, and just you know yank it out of the canal. Um, you know any deeper than that and it's just too large it would be like moving an elephant through a, a, a narrow corridor and uh, you know the bigger the instrument the more likely, the more likely, likely, excuse me, you are to bump up against something or scrape something. Um, so it's just not worth it. Um, so lovely looking eardrum there, nice and shiny, pale grey. That's what we want to see. And this is the debris that we removed with the suction and largely with the scoop. So it looks to me as though actually it's largely dead skin, um, which doesn't surprise me actually. Uh, so we're looking at a couple of centimeters, I suppose. Um, and there's the scoop there. And what I'll do is I'll hold the scoop up next to a Jobson horn so you can see the difference. So the, uh, that's the loop end, as I said, and the other end is very similar to a Rosen inserter. Um, and again, I'll link the Rosen inserter in the description below as well. But there's the difference. So fairly minimal, 
but uh, the Formby scoop just has a different size. Um, and then on the other end there, you can see the spike end. The Jobson one actually has a threaded end here. Some of them have a serrated end. Um, and the reason for that is that sort of back, back in the old days, um, the, the technique with using, with using a Jobson horn was that uh, if you were doing irrigation, and originally before I trained to do microsuction many years ago, before that I was trained to do irrigation. So some people call it syringing, but it's essentially squirting water into the ear with a machine. And uh, once you had irrigated the ear and cleaned everything out, you were taught to grab a Jobson horn and put a little piece of cotton wool between your fingers and twizzle the Jobson horn around so you would form this sort of bulb uh, of cotton wool. And you would go in and do a technique called dry mopping, where you would essentially mop up all the excess water that was lying in the ear, particularly in the recess, um, just before the eardrum. And you were actually taught to go in and keep inserting the Jobson horn until you felt resistance, until you actually felt the, the probe hitting the eardrum. Uh, and then you were supposed to dab down and clear all the water out of the recess, which uh, seems like a crazy idea now, but that's what we were trained to do at the time. So there we go. I hope you found this video interesting. Uh, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one.